the water glistens like diamonds beneath the afternoon sun. A dark brown skeleton of a boat is seen, rotting and worn. It's out of place on this magical sea. There's no place to move, supplies are low, and some crew is sick. Thai authorities gave them fuel, food and water before sending them back out to sea. These are the Rohingya, followers of Islam. History dates the earliest Islamic settlements in Rakhine State to the 7th century. This is the Rohingya's home, but the government of Myanmar, a predominantly Buddhist country, doesn't accept this. A 1982 citizenship law failed to list the Rohingya as one of the country's national races. This made them stateless, outsiders in their own country. They've had their land stolen, homes burnt, and family members murdered. I had my baby with me. They snatched him away, threw him to the ground, and killed him. The UN calls it a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. Humans literally trying to wipe out another group of humans. My child often cries for her mother. What will we do without her? <laughs> so the Rohingya fled, many arriving at Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh, now home to the world's largest refugee camp. In 2018, there were 1.1 million people at this camp. That number's kept growing, but the camp hasn't. Those camps are locked down. They don't have adequate health services. So people are making a dangerous, perilous voyage to try to get to a better life. They're risking their lives by boarding boats, but in the midst of a pandemic, with borders closed, no one's letting them in. Still stateless, still alone, still anchored in international waters, lies a fragile shipment that nobody wants to sign for. A cargo of human life.